All right, welcome back. We are ready to start programming Shoot the Monster, but first let's go through the project to see what we have available to us. So as you can see, we have quite a number of sprites that are available. So let's go through each of them in turn. First of all, we have this monster sprite, which will sit at the center of the screen and whose size is a little bit bigger than what's shown here on stage. So if I set its size to 100%, notice that it's pretty huge. So we're going to set its size to 25% throughout the entire game. All right. Then we have levels, which are these barriers that will block our bullets and they will rotate around the monster. So we have level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. Each one of those sprites has in general, only one costume, and that will rotate around the monster. We're going to learn about how to do that very shortly, all right? Now, level one is the exception because it has two costumes. It has this ring shaped with a hole where we can slide our bullets, but it also has another costume which basically makes the monster invisible. This will be our costume when we switch the levels and when the monster replenishes its life when we finish up one level, all right? We're going to program all of that throughout this chapter, so don't worry about that. So we have our barriers here that are going to be our levels. Then we have our player sprite. This is interesting for a few reasons. First of all, you have a number of ships that you can choose from. And uh, throughout the entire chapter, I'm going to use this Viper costume, but you can use any ship you like. If you have a preference, you can feel free to use your favorite ship. All right. But the most important aspect about this sprite is that its center is far away from the actual ship, which will allow us to do some very easy rotation. You'll see that because of this layout, rotating around the monster will be very easy. All right. Now, for a given ship, there is also a matching backdrop to indicate the life of the monster and the life of your appropriate ship. And I've created backdrops for every single ship that you can choose, right? For the duration of this chapter, I'm going to use this backdrop for the Viper. But if you have a different favorite ship, you can pick another backdrop. Then we have sprites for bullets. These will be the bullets that we will fire towards the monster. And this bullet sprite has two costumes, one a plain green bullet and one signifying an explosion. So when the bullet will hit any one of these barriers, the bullet will switch the costume to this explosion and will create this nice explosion effect. Speaking of bullets, we also have monster generated bullets. So this is the black bullet that the monster will fire towards us. And when the bullet explodes, it has this nice explosion effect. And we will cycle between these costumes to simulate an explosion effect. The same effect will be also be available for the monster bombs. So these are time bombs that the monster will fire. And these bombs will stay on the stage for a number of seconds. And they will cycle the costumes until the bomb is ready to explode. After which, we'll also have this detonation effect. Then we have life sprites for the player and the monster. So we have, for example, the monster life starting from full and going all the way down. And notice that as the monster life is depleting, the color of this sprite changes from green to red, which is also the case for the player life. So we also start with a green sprite and depleting all the way to the left and becoming red as the monster hits us. And finally, we have two sprites for messaging and text. So we have a sprite for messages, and this contains indicators for the levels we are at, so level one to level five, and then some additional messages like you win, game over, and the shoot the monster tutorial, which is a one-liner, shoot the monster with a space bar. That's everything that you need to know. And finally, we have this little sprite which says play. This will be the trigger that will start off the game. And that is the first sprite that we will actually end up programming. So here goes. I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring in when flag clicked. Now, when the flag is clicked, I would like to show this sprite. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to bring in show because the sprite is not always going to be visible on the screen. As soon as the game starts, this 
sprite will be hidden. So when the flag clicked, I want to show it and I want to make the sprite fade in to the screen. So I'm going to start with its transparency effect to 100 and over a number of repetitions, I'm going to decrease its transparency effect. So I'm going to set its ghost effect to 100, which makes the sprite completely transparent. And then after a couple of seconds, so I'm going to go to control and I'm going to wait for two seconds. I'm going to make the sprite less transparent. So over say 20 repetitions, I'm going to make this sprite less transparent by changing its ghost effect by negative five. So 20 times five, that is 100. So from the value 100, I'm getting to the value zero, which means that the sprite is fully visible on the screen. So when I click the flag, after two seconds, the sprite should fade in just like that. Now, as I mentioned, this sprite is going to be the trigger for the entire game. So I'll need to click it to make it disappear and tell all the other sprites to prepare for the start of the game. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to drag a new script starting with when this sprite clicked. So when I click play, I would like to broadcast a message to all the other sprites to prepare for the start of the game. So I'm going to broadcast a message and I'm going to name it start game. So when the sprite is clicked is going to broadcast start game. Now when a sprite broadcasts a message, all the other sprite including itself are able to receive this message. So when I receive start game, I can do something. For example, fade out of the screen. So here goes. I'm going to make this sprite fade out by copying this repeat block but I'm going to change its ghost effect by five instead of negative five. So I'm going to increase this sprite's transparency effect until it becomes fully transparent. And then I'm going to fully hide it from the stage. So I'm going to bring in hide. So when I click the flag, after a couple of seconds, the sprite will fade in. And when I click it, it will fade out and it will tell all the other sprites to prepare for the start of the game. Now, the next thing that I want to program is the messages sprite. So let me bring the when flag clicked here. So when the flag is clicked, I would like to set this sprite's costume to the shoot the monster with the space in parentheses. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to switch costume to kill the monster. All right. And then I'm going to also move it to the center of the screen because right now it's pretty offset. So I'm going to bring in this go to block and I'm going to say X equals zero and Y equals let's say negative 120. So if I detach these, notice that if I click this block, the sprite moves here to the center of the screen, which looks pretty good. All right. But I also, at the start of the game, I would like to make this sprite fade into the screen. So you know the trill. I'm going to set its ghost effect to 100. And over time, I'm going to decrease this ghost effect. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in a repeat block. So repeat, and I'm going to make the sprite fade in very slowly. So repeat over 50 repetitions. I'm going to go to looks back and I'm going to change the ghost effect by negative two. So a very slow fade in. So if I click the flag, notice that the sprite slowly fades in and after a second, this play sprite appears on the stage. This looks pretty cool. Now, when I click the play sprite, I would like this messages sprite to change its costume and get back here to the bottom left corner of the stage. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring in this when I receive block. So when I receive start game, which is broadcast by the play sprite when I click it, all right, I'm going to also broadcast a message called level one. So I'm going to broadcast a new message and I'm going to name it level one. 
we are going to broadcast a different message for every level that we will have in the game. So we'll have two separate messages, one for triggering the game altogether and one for each level. All right. Now, because this sprite broadcasts level one, all the other sprite, including itself, are there to receive it. So I'm going to also bring when I receive level one. So when I receive level one, I'm going to make this sprite's costume change to level one, and I'm going to make it glide to the bottom left corner of the stage. So here goes. I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to glide one seconds to not this one, this one to X and Y and X is going to be negative 160 and negative 160. So right about here on the bottom left part of the stage. And I'm going to change its costume to level one right before that. So when I receive level one, I'm going to switch the costume to level one and glide one second. So let me hit the flag. The sprite fades in, the play sprite fades in. And if I click play, notice what's happening. We changed the costume and it glided to the corner of the stage. Now, before I move on to the next video, I would like to clear up the screen so that for the next video, we can focus on the player and the monster exclusively. All right. So I'm going to hide every single one of these sprites when we click on the green flag. So for example, I'm clicking on the bullet sprite now. And when the flag is clicked, I wanted to hide it. So when flag clicked, I'm simply going to hide it. And the same with the monster bullet and the monster bomb. So I'm going to click on the monster bullet. When flag clicked. And I'm going to hide it. And same with the monster bomb. All right, so that when we hit the flag, all these sprites are out. Good. Now, I also want to hide these inner rings. So for the levels, when we hit the flag, so I'm going to click on the level one sprite and I'm going to do a very similar thing. So when the flag is clicked, I'm going to do the following. I am going to make sure that the costume of the sprite is ring one because it can also be in the invincible costume. So I want to make sure that the costume is ring one and I want to hide it. And I'm also going to choose a random direction for this sprite because when the game starts, I would like this to start in a random direction. All right. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to point in direction. And in this space, I'm going to pick a random number from the operator section. I'm going to bring in this rounded block, pick random one, two, and I'm going to fill in 360 here because 360 degrees is the total amount of rotation that an object can have. If you remember from the Pong sprite. So this picks any random possible direction. And I'm going to do a similar thing for the other levels as well. So I'm going to click on level two and I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to bring in when flag clicked and I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to go to motion and point in direction and go to operators, pick random one to 360 degrees. And I'm going to actually duplicate this code in all the other sprites. So I'm going to drag this code and I'm going to snap it on to level three, to level four and level five. All right. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see the code very clearly on the screen. But all of these circles are basically having the same logic. When we hit the flag, we hide them and we point them into a random direction so that now when I hit the flag, all of them are out. All right. So all of this looks good. Let's continue programming, shooting the monster in the next video.